Good morning. I want to have a serious discussion with you about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that's mental illness. And um, I want to talk a little bit about the who. I want to talk a little bit about the how. That is, the how you can confront it, how you can deal with it, and, uh, and see if maybe I can help some individuals out. I am no stranger to mental health issues, and I will right up front say, for those that want to take that little bitty bit and attack, I would remind you that I've actually dealt with my demons. If you want to make fun of me for admitting to my demons, that just means you haven't dealt with yours. So I would hold off just a little bit. I want to talk to the folks that are tired of fighting, tired of struggling with their mental illness. And I'm not going to have no quick and easy answers for you. That's, the, that's part of the problem, okay? Part of the problem is the psychology that we have today is much more of a take a pill and point a finger psychology. That is not going to help anybody, especially yourself. So I want to unwrap it a little bit. I want to talk about the ways to deal with it. And a large part of that is dealing with the root of the issue. So first I want to talk a little bit about the who, okay? Because if you do a Google search on this, it's going to be much akin to putting on a blindfold and playing darts because you're going to find numbers all over the place. And so I want to kind of unwrap that to begin with and discuss why you see those numbers all over the place. So uh, let's go ahead and go over to the web browser real quick. And uh, I've got a few different web pages open here. One of them, obviously, the first one here, Pew Research Center. And uh, I have highlighted a section here. And uh, we're going to go over this. It just simply says, uh, young adults are especially likely to have faced high levels of psychological distress since the COVID-19 outbreak began. 58% of Americans aged 18 to 29 fall into this category based on their answers in at least one of these four surveys. It says women are much more likely than men to have experienced high psychological distress, and they're saying 48% versus 32% as are people in lower income households, they're saying 53%, when compared with those in middle income households, which they're saying 38%, or upper income households, they're saying 30%. In addition, roughly two thirds or 66% of adults who have a disability or health condition that prevents them from participating fully in work, school, housework, or other activities have experienced a high level of distress during the pandemic. Now, this is a little more focused towards the pandemic itself. And that's also where you're going to find some of your higher percentage rates. Okay, so let's go on over to the next article I have open, which is from Harvard Medical School. And this here as well throws that dart somewhere around the 50-50 range, right? We're going to get into that. We're going to explain that. So again, I've got just a little section here highlighted that kind of breaks down the who kind of thing. It says this study showed that most common mental illnesses were mood disorders such as major depression or anxiety and that the risk of certain mental disorders differed by sex. That is very true. It says the three most common mental health disorders among women are depression, specific phobia, a disabling anxiety that interferes with daily life, post-traumatic stress disorder. And I know that's one that a lot of people don't necessarily hear when it comes to the women, and people should probably be asking why. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the whole PTSD thing, I'm not so confident that's very accurate when it comes to the women. So uh, I know where they're going with that, and you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful of agendas, especially in the mental health industry. But we'll leave that alone for now. The three most common mental health disorders among men were alcohol abuse, depression, and spe uh, specific phobia, right? However, you don't see PTSD listed there for men, and PTSD in men are actually much higher than PTSD in women. But again... Harvard Medical School, 
agenda. So let's just call it for what it is, right? Now I've got one more here. And um, this is going to kind of show you a little bit more of the true accuracy of the numbers, okay? So uh, this here basically, in fact, mental health issues can affect anyone in 2022 about, and it's going to say, uh, or 2020, sorry, about one in five American adults experienced a mental health condition in a given year. That's accurate, very accurate. One in six young people have experienced a major depressive episode. Uh, I would say that 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 number is probably very conservative. I think probably uh, there's many more. I, I would I would throw that probably at around, well, no doubt at least one in five, but very possibly one in four, especially in today's society. And then lastly here, uh, 1 in 20 Americans have lived with a serious mental illness such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or major depression. That is absolutely true, and I would say that that is really close to being right on target. So, just my opinion on that as far as how the numbers shake out. Again, I have dealt with this my entire life. I'm no stranger to it. And I have had to learn means and methods in order to cope with it, in order to deal with it, so that it didn't destroy myself or those around me. And the best thing that I can tell people when it comes to coping with mental illness, it starts out with identification and self-awareness. has to start out there. If you don't start out with self-awareness, then there's nowhere else you can go. You have to admit to the problem before you can deal with the problem. So how do you do that? My opinion is you don't keep it a secret. You don't keep it a secret and you don't expect other people to enable it. Those are very important steps to take in this. You will hear me commonly say, I'm a weirdo. I'm a weirdo. I'm not just saying that to be funny. I'm saying that to be accurate. I am a weirdo. There's probably a 99.9% .9 chance that I am nothing like you, or you, or you. I have, I've experienced depression, I've experienced PTSD, I deal with PTSD on the daily. I, uh, first off, I want to say that, you know, the whole pill popping, finger pointing thing isn't going to help you, okay? Those are ways that might make you feel a little better for the moment, but they are not dealing with the actual root of the issue, which is what you, you need to do. If you want to get better, you need to deal with the root of the issue. So, again, my PTSD largely stems from my childhood. Uh, I grew up in a... Uh, my father was physically abusive. Uh, my mom was mentally emotionally abusive and so I had all kinds of crazy to try to figure out from a young age I would say the most impactful thing and probably the biggest way that I am a weirdo compared to most of you is my um, my OCD about learning I'm constantly have to be learning I constantly have to be building my, my knowledge base constantly and there's a reason for that. When I was young, I was constantly called stupid. So I guess my, my father was definitely to blame for some of the mental emotional abuse as well, because he's the one that would commonly call me stupid. And it, it got to a point to where I can actually remember asking my mom if I was retarded, because I kept hearing nonstop about how stupid I was. And um, that was an impactful thing. Now, to be honest, I couldn't even tell you what my mom replied. I'm sure she probably told me no, but I can't tell you. I don't know. However, I do remember one particular point in my life that obviously made a, a big impact or else it wouldn't be such a strong memory in my mind. I can remember one time I saw something on the news, right? 
and uh, it was talking about uh, some college class, some college, uh, it was an engineering class. And so every year they did this thing, and I, I want to say that the, the college was in Florida, um, but every year they did this thing to where they had their students design an aircraft, right? And you, they had to use whatever kind of materials they had access to. And we're talking everything from, you know, the obvious wood to even cardboard boxes. I mean, it was insane some of the designs that these people came up with. And what they did was they essentially, they went out on a pier, okay, uh, by the water. And so they launched themselves off of the pier into the water. And as you might guess, many of the aircraft didn't fly so well and uh, all of them ended up in the water because there was nowhere else you were going to end up right so but i remembered seeing that on the news and i've always loved aviation i've always loved rocketry and all of that so i was excited by what i saw and i said something to my dad and my my brother david was there and i got ridiculed and shunned and accused of lying to no end, but I wasn't. All I was doing was talking about something that I had seen that I'd gotten really excited about. And that really sticks in my mind because I wasn't lying. That's one thing I can't stand. I can't stand when people will accuse me of not telling the truth when I really don't have any any agenda I don't have any reason to lie and so I guess there's there's two things two takeaways from that one is that I've got this this deal to where I constantly have to learn I constantly have to build my knowledge base I, I constantly have to build my skills base and two I cannot stand liars not even a little bit. And I'm talking about anything from major lies to even the little bitty white ones. To me, the little bitty white ones can be even worse than the big ones. And so that is some of the roots of some of my personal issues. And the best way that, in my opinion, somebody can deal with their issues, like I said, that first it has to be identified and it has to be recognized. You have to be self-aware. You have to be able to say, I'm a weirdo. Or you have, however it is that, that you are. You have to be able to admit to that. Because remember, we can't go anywhere. We can't move forward at all until we reach that step. Popping pills and blaming other people is not going to do it. Now, you may think that, oh, well, you just talked about your dad. And you talked about your mom. You talked... Okay, but am I, am I putting my focus on pointing at them and saying, They're, it's their fault, it's their fault? No, I'm not. I'm identifying with the root of where it happened because you need to do that. And then the rest is on me. Where I take it from here, where I take that tomorrow or today, is 100% on me. My mom, my dad, my brother have no effect on that. None. And so... The most important thing with this, again, is the identification, the self-awareness of the issue, and then you have to formulate something. And the tools are going to be different for every one of us because we are absolutely individual people. And so what tools will work for me may not work for you. And I would say that's probably going to be as accurate as it gets. Because I, I have some very weird problems and, and I am much, much a weird person. Like I say, I'm a weirdo. I admit it. There's not a lot of people on this planet that don't involve themselves in, in a, a fair amount of entertainment. I'll just say a fair amount of entertainment because there's a large populace, especially here in the United States, that much of their life is based around entertainment. Watching sports, watching TV or something of that nature, okay? I don't. I am constantly learning new things. Constantly. I, I can't think of a day that I wasn't learning something new. But I am constantly. Okay, today I tried connecting my computer up to my pocket too. 
and I had that what they call the do-it-all handle I had it connected okay all I wanted to do was take a file off of the SD card that's on my pocket too without pulling my pocket you know the SD card out of my pocket too and sticking it should have been a simple procedure right so I did it and no bueno nothing popped up in my file explorer showing me my pocket too as a like a USB drive what gives well so I wound up going doing a Google search to figure out why I never did come up with that answer from that Google search but just from doing enough things with enough different things I thought let me yank that do it all handle off which connects through the USB-C port and let me connect the pocket to directly to the computer and see what happens without the do it all handle in the middle I did that sure enough popped up on my computer as a USB drive opened it up did what I needed to do so no matter how big or how little I learned today that I cannot plug in a USB-C cord to my computer to my pocket too to be able to pull files off of it with the do-it-all handle installed I have to remove the do-it-all handle first okay and that may sound simple that may sound goofy but it is learning something today and I will spend the rest of my day learning different things even if it's about news which for obvious reasons I'm constantly learning about that but it's not going to stop there yesterday what did I do okay well I made several batches of, of dumplings for chicken and dumplings so I could freeze them and that way I've got them and I don't have to deal with making batches each time right so I made several batches of dumplings uh, which I have done before and I also made some hardtack which is a common popular prep prepper food right and um, and so I mean that's the first time never made hardtack before in my life so there you go and I can't just eat hardtack because I don't have teeth I've got like two like rotten stubs in my mouth that's it that's all I got and it's amazing how I can just come right out and say that right because I've dealt with my demons and so I thought well I've got a one of those little ninja food processor thingies that we had gotten gosh probably nine years ago maybe going on ten years ago that thing is the bear that thing is awesome and so I threw a couple of the pieces of the hardtack in there and chopped it up yeah that thing is that mean and I actually chop up hardtack and uh, and yeah I can sit there and I can munch away on on this uh, processed up hardtack and it's actually fairly good I uh, yeah fairly good would I want it to survive on no but it would be great to snack on and it's, it's carbs right so I will be making more hardtack to store away absolutely so yesterday learned how to make hardtack also learned that I can process it in my little ninja food processor so that I can actually eat it so I'm constantly learning new things that never ever stops and that is one of the ways I cope with it but you know there, there came a point in life to where I was like wait a minute you have learned a whole hell of a lot of different stuff about a whole hell of a lot of different things you don't qualify as stupid anymore in fact you never did but that's just it if you have something that's eating at you okay first of all you need to ask yourself am I guilty of this and if you are then you need to fix that see that's where we run into a big problem in today's society is because there is so much enabling going on that is the worst thing you can do do not enable people absolutely do not enable people because what you are doing is you are harming them and you are harming every single person around them when you enable them that is the worst thing that you can do we have a lot of that going on in this society now we have a bunch of mental mental I ah, can't even say it mental illness going around parading as things like the trans movement 
the LGTBQ, whatever. I can't get all the letters. I don't think anybody knows all the letters at this point. That, much of that, I'm not saying 100%, but much of that is simple mental illness. And a lot of it comes down to people looking for attention. People not having proper outlets to deal with their issues. When the mental health industry, and that's what it became, took the turn for finger pointing and taking pills, the people didn't stand a chance. And while that isn't any of our fault, what is our fault is to continue on using the same failed tactics, which is enabling and pill popping, finger pointing. It's all failed tactics. You have to grab this bull by the horns, so to speak, and you have to address it. And yes, it can be the most absolutely scariest thing that you've ever done. But until you do that, you won't get better. And the more you just keep sweeping it under the rug or not addressing it, it will keep coming back. And each time that it comes back, it will come back larger and larger and larger. I've dealt with all kinds of mental illness. I've dealt with major control issues. I've dealt with the, the gambit. And, you know, sometimes it, it really takes a major shakeup in your life to be able to recognize, to be able to motivate you to deal with a problem. And so the last, last problem that I personally dealt with was the control issues. And that was largely because I'd lost my family, still haven't seen my kids. January 14th, 2014 was the last time that I had seen my boys. I remember the date very well. And there's nothing I can do about that. But what I can do is identify what my inputs to the problem was and address them. That is all I can do. Nothing promises that I'll ever see my boys again. I sure the hell hope I do. I miss them. I miss them terribly. But what I can do is make sure that I'm on a mental even keel so that if they do re-enter my life, I am in a good space mentally for that. My control issues didn't come out in the typical way that you would imagine control issues came out. Um, it was partially control issues. It was partially... Um, I wanted acceptance from, we'll say, the, the female gender, okay? And so there was a period of time there that I, I was married and I had a girlfriend. In fact, me and my wife and my kids lived with the girlfriend. And that ain't right. And a lot of that was actually me failing to deal with the issues, okay? My wife was, and I'm sure is, not a good person. Not even by a stretch of the imagination. She is very, very much a scheming, conniving, lying. And here, I was in a situation where I had two children with this woman. I knew that because of the, the, the conniving, the scheming, the lying, the way she is, the way she's been raised, because it's not her, it's, it's, it's a family thing. I knew that there was a good chance I would never see those kids again. I knew that then. And in fact, I knew the last day on January 14, 2014, the last day that I had seen them, I knew that there was a very good possibility that I'd never see them again. I can't do nothing about that even if I had a ton of money to address it legally, the chances are, are so against a man in this, in this current time of having any chance. And in fact, 
this is this this is there was not long ago a shooting that happened in Texas at Joe Olstein's church. Okay? And I was looking into that shooting and the the woman that committed the crime she had been no stranger herself to mental illness. In fact, um, they had to do an entire investigation to find out what her pronouns were because they didn't know if she was identifying as female or male at the time because she's done both. She's born female. Obviously, she had a child. And as long as you don't talk to mentally corrupt individuals, men can't have children. So she had had a child. Now get this. I don't know all the extenuating circumstances here, but here you've had a woman that is, has clearly serious mental health issues. A woman that when she had the child, had drugs in her system, okay, and they, they picked up on those drugs in, her, you know, on, in the child as well. So you've got some major issues here. Okay, and for whatever reason, there was a custody dispute, and the guy lost, the, the, the man lost. Now, I don't know anything about him, I don't know, I mean, maybe that was for a good reason, I don't know. But I can tell you this, there is a 99% chance in today's world, if there is any type of a custody dispute, the man does not stand a chance. And it doesn't matter how much money he has to throw at it, it doesn't matter how much more qualified or, or a better role model that the man is for the children. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is, well, that's a man. I don't get it. And it's, it's a large part of what's destroying this, this nation. And it's a, actually a large part of what's causing so many psychological issues in our nation. Because you don't have that father role in the households and that is very important you need both you need the mother to teach compassion and caring and love and you need the man the, the dad to teach about you know structure to teach about you know basic rules things you know you need both that that is that is what works and when you take away one or the other you're gonna have issues. You're going to very likely produce a child that's going to have issues. And until we can start admitting this stuff, until we can, we can't address it. We can't address it. We have to admit it first and then maybe we can start to address it. But look folks, that, that, that's the whole key. Identify the issue. Don't worry about pointing the fingers. Don't worry about, you know, take medication if you absolutely have to, but don't, don't let that be a crutch, okay? Don't let that be a crutch. You have to be very careful of the medications they're, they're giving out today. There are all natural methods of, of medicating that, um, I'll leave it, there's just all natural methods. There's, there's, um, a vegetable type of plant that you can um, that that you can consume uh, that will actually help with a lot of forms of mental illness. If it if it wouldn't have been for that uh, vegetable like plant, I probably wouldn't even have came close to making it this far in the world. So, be very careful though of the pharmaceuticals because they can often cause major addictions and they can cause major organ failure. And all kinds of other things. Nasty, nasty stuff. You know. But, um, you know, lastly, I just want to say is, is, is there is hope. There is a way. You just have to keep fighting. Each and every day. My, my battles never stop. My battles never stop. I have to fight it every single day. And on top of that, I've got people that try to add to it every single day. Not easy, but I'm not one to give up. I'm not one to give in. If anybody needs somebody to talk to, I know that I come off very much as an asshole. I'm not. I'm not. What I don't have room for is bullshit. And so that's why a lot of people might 
judge me as being an asshole because you'll see me quite often calling out people that are not doing the right thing especially if those individuals are leading others down a wrong path that's where I really get get fired up anyway I'm, if anybody needs to talk I'm here I'm here I'll do my best but I will say this be ready to address the issue because I'm not going to enable anybody including myself hopefully this spoke to some hopefully it helped some hopefully if you have this this issue if you have these issues maybe this will help you get onto a road to a better life with that I will say what I always say when I close the live shows love you all be one with your spirit hang in there I can't say life gets instrumentally better because that would be a lie but I can tell you that no matter what darkness you're going through right now this too shall pass Shalom.